Hey there everybody, before we get started here, I just want to let you all know very quick that my good friend Jordan Farrell, who was one of the guests of this video, wrote and directed a short film called Muscle Men's Christmas Drive, which is a regular show fan film that he worked really hard on. So if you want to check out the short film, I will leave a link in the description down below. And please, please, if you do watch it, log it on your letterbox and give your honest opinion of it. Um, I got to have a small part in it as well um, in a dance sequence and I have a voice cameo as a certain conductor and that was a lot of fun to do. He released his short film on New Year's Eve and I want to hopefully get enough to watch the short film. Thank you all so much and let's get started with the anticipated video for 2023. Hello there, everybody. Uh, this is 22 Tiger Dude here. Here, uh, of course, as always, with all of my special guests, Mi Amigos, right over here. And welcome to our top five anticipated movies for uh, winter spring of 2023. Yes, we have hit the new year. 2022 felt like it only lasted a day. Um, and now here we are with 2023, which is probably also going to feel like only a day long. But here we are. We're going to be talking about movies, celebrating movies, talking about the movies that we are most looking forward to. Um, and of course, as always, I'm always very excited to do that. As always, before we do get deeper to the video, I'm going to let everyone uh, have their introductions one by one. Starting off with, uh, unfortunately, Film Fan 0599. You goddamn right, baby. Um, Don Cheadle. Anyway, huh. indeed, Don Cheadle, yeah. indeed. Um, but hey, what's up, you guys? Film Fan 0599 here again. We're back at it again, baby. Another top five anticipated video. Spring, win, uh, winter, spring, baby. Spring, baby, baby, spring. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. I actually yeah. don't know what you're saying. Can you explain that for me, please? Yeah, I, 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 sh I shall explain by, <laughs> by reading this 20 page book. Um, anyways, um, I you. hope uh y'all are doing well and uh yeah let's let's have a good old time with this next one up is violet hello hello everyone it, it's a new year and i am not a new me because i'm still a bitch now listen we're here for the top five of the winter and spring i'm very excited um i'm really i'm I, i'm actually like kind of bummed out because film fans here but i'm still gonna try to have a good time um, so yeah, so that's that, but yeah. Fuck you. Wow. I love you too. Okay. Next, next one up is <clears throat> Brian Mendoza. Hey everyone, it's Brian here, and um, I'm excited to talk about movies. Um, I know film fans most anticipated is Doolittle. He told Woo! me that yesterday. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's a spoiler. Um, I hope More like Mendoza don't that. big. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait to talk about these. <laughs> Next one up we got is Henry Ewing. We're back, baby. It's the new year. Time for our favorite triannual tradition once again. And yeah, once again off to a great start already. And last we have is Jordan F -f 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 Farrell. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, when I'm not doing BDSM shit with my candy cane, I'm here to do this top oh five list. <laughs> it's okay, Jordan. If you like being choked, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The only thing that will make it better is if Film Fan wasn't here, but unfortunately, he's here. Yeah, so. I agree. I agree. But I'm here for the top five <laughs> lists. Uh, we're in 2023 for some fucking reason now. Uh, it felt like, yeah, it was a few days ago that 2022 was a thing. But yeah, here we are. Transitioning to Black Now. So for my honorable mentions, I only got four. I don't really got a whole lot. But the ones that I am looking forward to are A Man Called Otto, 65, Cocaine Bear, which looks I can't wait for that. 
And then the movie that missed my top five would have to be Shazam! Fury of the Gods. I only have uh, two honorable mentions. Uh, so, 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 yeah. Uh, here we go. Uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp uh, WrestleMania and uh, Scream 6. It's time for my honorable mentions. I surprisingly have like eight or nine honorable mentions. Uh, so here we go. All right, first up, we have Megan, uh, which uh, is coming out very, very soon and is going to be the best movie of the year already. Uh, then we have A24's Close. And then unironically, 84 Brady. It's going to be great and everyone knows it. Woo! Okay. And then we have a movie that is a very, very much a violent movie. Magic Mike's Last Dance. Cannot wait. Um, Ant-Man and the Lost Quantum Mania, uh, which the trailer for that movie looks fantastic. And I'm surprised that a lot of people think it, it, it doesn't, which is okay. I'm just surprised because I think it's a really good trailer. Um, then we have Cocaine Bear, which, you know, I don't need to explain. Then we have a 65 because it's dinosaurs. Uh, and then we have the Super Mario Bros. movie. I, it's gonna, I can't wait. And then we have Renfield, uh, which is gonna be fun because vampires and Nicolas Cage. And that, those are my honorable mentions. A little fun fact, actually. I didn't even know Renfield was a thing until Brian messaged me about it just today. Just a little fun fact there. Hey, hey, I'm glad you found out about it just in time. Trailers tomorrow. All right. I got five honorable mentions. I got Creed 3. Maybe they might make nine of those. Uh, I got Cocaine Bear. And then The Lost, Quantum Mania, John Wick 4, and Shazam! Fury of the Gods. That's it. All righty. My honorable mentions are... House Party, Infinity Pool, Renfield, Creed 3, Cocaine Motherfucking Bear, Evil yes. Dead Rise, When You Finish Saving the World, John Wick Chapter 3, and one that was really close to making my list but just missed it, Missing. No pun intended. Hey. For my honorable mentions, I have The Old Way, and Renfield, both Nicolas Cage movies, Missing, Knock at the Cabin, Ant-Man and the Lost, Quantum Mania, Cocaine Bear, Dungeons and Dragons, starring Mac Daddy, Chris Pine, Chevalier, and Evil Dead Rise. All righty. Now that we all said our honorable mentions, now let's get to our number five. Hey. <laughs> Wahoo! My number five is a movie that, you know, from the moment I saw the trailer, I was like, oh, I know this is going to be a shoe in for one of the greatest films just ever made in the history of cinema. That is 80 for Brady. This movie looks absolutely yeah! revolutionary. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to yeah, win all the Oscars. Go! I was blown away, especially with Guy Fury. I think Guy Fury is going to win it all. Just okay. I, I just I just can't wait. But no, in all seriousness, my real number five is actually Knock at the Cabin. Um, it is the new M. Night Shyamalan movie, and I'm definitely really looking forward to it. That teaser trailer is honestly enough for me to just get really excited about it. And of course, you got a really great cast too, um, with Dave Batista and Rupert Grant from the Harry Potter franchise, because he has worked with M. Night on that Apple TV Plus show, Servant. So I think it's cool that he's working with M. Night again. But now on a movie, and I haven't seen Rupert Grin in anything like big since the Harry Potter franchise. So I'm definitely most looking forward to seeing him in a movie to, again. But just the overall premise of it just looks very fascinating to me. With these M. Night movies, you never know how they're going to go. They could either be very well executed or the execution could be iffy, like an old in my opinion. But either way, I'm always going to be fascinated because M. Night is truly one of the most talented directors out there. And I don't think his talent should be taken for granted at all. And that's why I'm just really excited for this. And that's why Knock at the Cabin is my number five. All righty, boy. All right, people. Hey, hey, hey. Number five on my list is going to be Evil Dead Rise. Um, literally, um, the this beast. was not the what of the beasts yes 
Um, anyways, um, this was not supposed to be on my list uh, at first, um, but the trailer, um, as of we're recording this, uh, was released today, and um, I immediately became um, excited for it. Um, I think this looks very gruesome, um, just really creepy, and I think uh, this has the potential to be one of the best uh, in the series. Um, already right off the bat, um, like I said, I think it looks very creepy, very gruesome. Um, we have the we have the um, the almighty cheese grater. If you've seen the tra Do trailer, not remind me. Um, in it, and um, it's it's. I, I hope it's a lot of fun. I hope it's great. Um, you know, um, the 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 Evil Dead franchise can be very hit or miss for me, but um, I hope this one is definitely a hit for me because it does look really great. And um, it definitely looks like it could be a fun time. So yeah, my uh, my number five is Evil Dead Rise. Woohoo! All righty, my number five. This I, this is a very interesting top five for me. Um, but my number five, it begins, and I this is unironically, this is not a joke. My number five is Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Now listen, now listen. I oh am <laughs> I am a sucker. Listen, I am a sucker at this point for campy, stupid, horror, goopy movies. Okay. I don't know what has happened with me in the last few months, but I've become a fan of them, especially after I saw Terrifier 2. So I, I like I, I saw the mean one in theater, so I've already I've already been supporting the horror parodies. And this one, <laughs> this one, listen, I'm a massive Winnie the Pooh fan. I grew up in Winnie the Pooh. It means a lot to me. I've had a lot of very special experiences with, with Winnie the Pooh. And this one looks like a magical, heartwarming, and charming experience that, I, that we really haven't had with Winnie the Pooh and Piglet yet. Um, this movie, <laughs> um, I will be going to the Phantom Event for. Um, I cannot wait. Now, is the movie going to be good? I don't know. But if it's anything like the mean one, uh, I, at least I know it's going to be a magical experience at the theater. And so that is why it is unironically my number five. And I, I cannot wait. Well said. All right. Thank my you. number My number five is <laughs> Megan. If anyone knows me, I love horror movies and I love Chucky. You love Megan! It's like my kind of movie. And that dancing is already iconic already um, yeah it's in your special compilation list and i think it's gonna be a lot of fun or it's really good so yeah number five megan megan <laughs> megan megan or the quote trick and josh megan, megan. yes <laughs> all right my number five is knock at the cabin the new m night Shyamalan film i I think that the teaser trailer for this was really good. I think Dave Batista is going to be good in it, and it's cool to see Rip, Rupert Grint in something other than Harold Potter. Shyamalan's films have been very polarizing, like old recently, which I thought was okay, but could have been better. And But this, I think, has potential to be something really good so fingers crossed let's see uh my number five is uh 80 for brady uh you know uh i like seeing old gilfs uh obsess over a man who's younger than them <laughs> uh, <Facts. laughs> uh i don't like football but i like old ladies playing with guys footballs uh, wow <laughs> Uh, uh, that's else, oh man, that sucks, you know. But also, there's this my real number five is Shazam Fury of the Gods. Uh, I wasn't that big on the character comic book wise, but that first movie really, uh, I guess, stole my heart. I liked the the whole family vibe that it had and the heart it had, you know. And this looks like it could be a lot, a lot of fun. Uh, will it lead to somewhere uh, after James Gunn's uh, rebooted universe? Probably not, but I'm looking forward to the ride before it gets rebooted. Uh, will we see a Dwayne Johnson cameo? Probably not because his ego is super fucking big. But, uh, but yeah, that's my number five. Now we all get into our number four. Wahoo! Mamma mia. <laughs> Here we go again. My number four is Batman: The Lost Quantum Mania. 
really, really excited for this one. It definitely looks like it's going to have the biggest scale in all of the Ant-Man movies. The first two movies were always meant to be more of your small scale, palate cleanser, heist type of movies. But this one definitely looks like it's going to be an Avengers type of level um, kind of scope. And I know Peyton Reed actually said uh, recently how he intentionally wanted to make this third one more of an Avengers scale type of movie, which I think it makes sense at this point to go larger with this third Ant-Man movie. And I can't wait to see what they're going to do with Kang uh, in this one, too. I think Jonathan Majors is a really talented actor. I'm glad to see him get a lot more work after Lovecraft Country on HBO. You know, he's definitely proven to be one of the best, I think, new talents going on right now. Um, so, yeah, very excited to see him. And visually, it looks really impressive, too. Looks really exciting. The stakes look like... It's going to be the highest we ever see in these Atman the Wasp movies, and that's why I can't wait to see it. Um, oh, yeah, and Bill Murray, he's in this one, too. That's very interesting that he's in an MCU movie. Um, but for all those reasons, uh, that's why I'm really excited for Atman the Wasp Quantumania, and I definitely hope it delivers. Oh, yeah, and it's actually the first one to kick off Phase 5. So on that note, hopefully it kicks off Phase 5 on a really great note as well people we're back at it again all right number four we have dungeons and dragons honor among thieves baby um i think this movie looks really cool um i'm a big fan of fantasy movies uh like this um i have never played dungeons and dragons my entire life but man does this look cool um i'm already liking a lot of the designs with the characters um and of this world uh chris pine is my dude so um, it's, so it's exciting to see him in a uh, lead a big budget movie uh, like this um, again and stuff like that. So just think it looks like a grand old time. Um, ha has some really cool visuals to it. I think this could be in the makings for a really um, cool fantasy film. So I hope it's done well. I hope it pleases uh, fans of Dungeons and Dragons because I know the last time that they adapted this, um, I heard it wasn't too great. So hopefully maybe they could get some redemption um, this time. So yeah, my number four is Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. Woohoo. Alrighty. My number four is Evil Dead Rise. Yes. Uh, the thing about the about Evil Dead that I've always admired is I always feel like it's like pushed the boundaries of like uh, horror and like especially like the, the gore, the goopy factor of it. And this one looks like it's doing that yet again. Uh, very intense trailer. Uh, some some certain shots look like they're going to be a funnel time at the theater. Uh, and I just love how like again like the aggression of the Evil Dead films and how they keep pushing for it. Um, and that like and that like map like uh, just like the madness of it. Uh, and yeah, no, I, I'm really, really excited to see this. I think it looks great. Uh, and it's definitely one of the films I want to see the most coming out soon. So that's why it's my number four. My number four is the new M. Night Shyamalan movie, Knock in the Cabin. Really like the look of it. Uh, he, he used a specific lens to make it look like late 90s kind of thriller, like The Sixth Sense. Uh, it looks really intense and I think the premise sounds really interesting. Really cool to see Dave Bautista in this kind of movie because I I feel like he's getting interesting roles as he be becomes more popular in these movies years later. So yeah, um, really excited for this one. Can't wait, wait for it. All right, my number four is the Super Mario Bros. movie. I. I've grown up with the Mario games, and I still play them now, and I remember, obviously, we had that casting comeback where they cast a crisp rat to play Mario, and <laughs> that became a meme, but I don't know about his casting still from the trailer, but other than that, I think the trailer did look really good, the animation was great and i thought that anya taylor joy charlie day and jack black look great in their roles just to name a few i know illumination hasn't been like the best 
studio and animated movies, but I know Nintendo has been pretty hands-on in the production, so that's cool. And I know it's coming out in IMAX. I don't know if it's IMAX 3D or not, but if it is, I'll be there. Well, uh, my number four is Spider-Man versus Superman Triple X and XL Braun parody. You know, you know, it's sad when an actual porn company actually gets to cross over these two iconic heroes together in one climax of an adventure. Uh, uh, but yeah, I'm just kidding. My number four is a fourth installment. Uh, it's John Wick Chapter Four. You know, I'm looking forward to Keanu Reeves. You know, kicking ass, taking names saying some ridiculous catchphrases he'll probably lose another body part his dick or something i don't know uh but i know it's not gonna be another finger uh i'm looking forward to meeting the round table and see how it builds up to a fifth movie if we get a fifth movie we'll see okay everyone now let's get into our number three Wahoo! And, uh, you know, number three, um, I guess it's actually very spooky because my number three is actually Creed 3. I'm very, very excited for this one. I think the first two are really well directed, really well made movies that are very grounded and very personal. You know, I like what they've done with Adonis Creed, played wonderfully by Michael B. Jordan. And Michael B. Jordan is actually going to be the director of this one. It's going to be his directorial debut. So I think that's very exciting. Obviously, I hope I wish him the best of luck with his directorial debut with this. This one looks like it's in this franchise just like a lot of really dark things you know involving like his friend and his past with that i'm very excited to see how they're gonna dive into that and obviously the boxing sequences look like they're gonna be very exciting and very heart pounding just like with the other creed movies as well really like the cinematography too the look of it i'm just excited to see michael b jordan back in this role and speaking of jonathan majors who i just mentioned in admin the lost right now um he, I guess he's going to be killing it with spring season because he has two movies and two movies I'm like really excited for. So I'm excited how he is going to play the antagonist in this one. And then of course you got Tessa Thompson back, which is very exciting as well. I think it just has the making to be a really, really good uh, third installment. And I definitely hope it could be that way to keep up with the consistency with this franchise. Um, I really enjoy a lot of the Rocky franchise. Um, Creed 3, that's my pick. Very excited, and I hope it doesn't disappoint. Hell yeah. All righty, motherfuckers. All righty, number three uh, on my list is uh, Knock at the Cabin, baby. Um, you know, um, I think the trailer, the teaser trailer was really fantastic. Um, really sets us up for uh, maybe what we're getting into, or maybe we, we have no idea what we're getting ourselves into. You know, I... I like the very vagueness of the uh the teaser trailer a lot you know um and i just think it looks intriguing um you know dave batista's my dude uh, i love that guy so much um he's been killing it um these past couple of years and i think he's going to kill it uh in this movie uh someone said uh someone said on twitter uh he looks like uh in this movie looks like uh bob hopkins with uh muscles and that made me laugh hysterically <laughs> I, um, can, I can actually see that i can actually um, see that and made me laugh hysterically um <laughs> and i'm excited to um I mean, i'm excited to see what he has to offer in this yo m night Shyamalan style uh seems like just you know taking full force into this and uh yeah i'm very excited i think it looks really great it has a, a very intriguing premise and um yeah, I hope I hope this is a good one. Uh, yeah, the number three, baby, the knock at the cabin. Dave Batista for Mario. Yes. Alrighty, my number three. We're continuing the horror trend, everybody, with a film that I am surprised I'm just excited for, but that is Scream Six. Uh, I love the Scream films, uh, some of them, um, but this one I honestly was not excited for just because. After Stream 5, which I love Stream 5, uh, it was one of my favorite films of last year, I, I just, I felt like at that point, I was like, how many more times can we do these Scream movies? Like, I felt like after that, like, it'd be a good closing point. Uh, but the the concept of this film was, like, taking place on Halloween in New York City, NYC, baby, 
Um, you know, which, you know, obviously like, the NYC horror is like, you know, in a slasher yeah, sense, obviously it's been done before, but, um, you know, this one seems like it's really embracing it and really like going for like, uh, the full atmosphere of that, uh, which I can't wait for, but that, that one minute teaser is such a good teaser that like, I'm just, I'm really excited that all of a sudden, uh, I think it, I think it just like got me like back into like the, like the scream universe again, like already so quickly. Cause obviously this film was developed and written very quickly and filmed very quickly. Uh, because they start like, you know, we just got the first one last January, uh, sorry, the fifth one, uh, last January. Uh, now we have this one. Uh, and I'm, I'm just really, really excited for it. Um, I love the posters also for this film. The posters for these movie of uh, this movie so far have been fantastic. Um, so I'm really, really excited and I hope that it is great. Uh, like Scream 5 was. Um, so yeah. My number three is a movie called Jurassic World 65. Okay. I'm kidding. It's called 65. This movie, this movie came out of nowhere. Like, I was watching YouTube and this trailer job. Like, what the heck is this? And I'm like, what? Adam Driver with the laser gun and dinosaur? I'm like, yeah, I'm sold. Like, this looks like one of those like late '90s movies that Jerry Bruckheimer would release. Gives me that vibe, and man, it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, I can't wait to see this one. And maybe it is a Star Wars sequel. Who knows, right? So that's my number three. <laughs> or maybe it's a Star Wars and Jurassic World crossover. What about Fast and Furious crossover? The last you know duel. what? You know what? Star just World it. Jurassic Wars. Oh, honestly, God. might honestly might as well just do it. Honestly, Jurassic Horse. Yeah. Alrighty, my my number three. Um, let me just get it out here. Shazam! Theory of the Gods. Nice. This. The first Shazam movie, I remember not thinking the trailer looked that good, but then I watched the movie and I really enjoyed it. And yeah, I definitely think it's one of the better movies of that universe that DC was trying to do. And this one looks good too, because I think that what they're going to go into is really interesting and... We've got Helen Mirren, Lucy Liu, and Rachel Zegler as new characters, which is exciting. So, yeah. My number three is Jack Frost by Michael Keaton. Uh, just kidding. No, it's actually a number three, uh, Creed three. Uh, I've grown up with the Rocky movies uh, since I was a kid. I remember being Rocky for Halloween and no one knowing who the fuck I was during Halloween and I had to tell him I was Rocky over and over again and they still had no clue what, what, who the fuck I was uh, and the, I remember watching the first grade being blown away by how fucking emotionally powerful it was and the sequel if not just as good as the first one and given uh, that this is Michael B. Jordan's directorial debut it, I really and confident that he's gonna knock out of the park as a director since he's so familiar with this franchise you know uh you never know once this movie's a success he could direct fan four stick two or five you know and uh, yeah. look, i look forward <laughs> to seeing the the story of adonis great continue uh in my pants well what <laughs> what <laughs> Thank you for jordan uh okay well, on that note, we're going to get into our number two. Take it away, Mario. Wahoo! Wahoo! I this one a lot. I am not sold on Chris Pratt. Um, I feel like a part of my heart dies every time I try to hear his voice, but I try to look past that. Um, aside from that, though, I think everything else about this looks top-notch, though. Uh, Charlie Day, I think, looks really good as Luigi. Um, Anya Taylor-Joy looks really good as Princess Peach. And then, of course, uh, Jack Black as Bowser. 
Oh my gosh, he is going so hard with that character. I honestly can't believe that's Jack Black. And the animation looks absolutely stellar in this. It's so beautiful. Um, definitely doesn't look like an Illuminations type of animation style that we're normally used to. And nothing uh, wrong with how their movies are animated. They're very colorful and all that. But obviously, style-wise, it's pretty much like the same. So... It is kind of cool to see him like kind of like step up in that and i definitely feel like i'm immersed in the world because of how well detailed and colorful the whole entire world is it looks like it's going to bring everything that's really fun about the games it looks like it could be a movie that could satisfy the fans and i did grow up playing the mario games um when i was over at like my neighbor's house or my cousins um when i was over at my cousin's house i had memories of playing the mario games and of course my favorite character was playing a uh, donkey kong um you know team donkey kong uh yeah i have a lot of fond memories of that so it'll be cool to see my childhood just basically play on the big screen uh i never imagined we'd get an animated super mario bros movie but here we are and i hope if this does really well maybe we could get like a legend of zelda animated movie and other properties because you just never know uh hopefully uh the future is bright in that way but like regardless i am definitely pulling for this to succeed video game movies um don't have the greatest track record but hopefully this one could definitely be one of the biggest bright spots um you know in the video game movie genre so that's me bros movie is my number two most anticipated i really really can't wait for it my number two is cocaine bear baby cocaine oh my god yes Whoa. yeah in bear baby oh my god <laughs> This looks so stupid. I'm so excited. Like, I, just the concept of a bear going on a rampage because he is high on cocaine. And it actually happened. Um, yeah. And, and yeah, and the fact that it's based on the true story too. Just, I, I just, I can't wait. This, this looks so stupid and so dumb. Like, I, I just can't wait. It looks so funny. Like, it, it just. <laughs> It's it's something I have to see to believe, and the trailer just, oh my god, just sells me so much on this. I am so excited. This is gonna be the biggest fucking meme of the year. I can't wait. Um, it, this just has all the makings of an instant classic, if you ask me. Um, so yeah, um, Cocaine Bear coming at my number two, baby. Hell yeah. All righty, my number two is knock at the cabin yes it's my number two sorry film fan i uh, and i uh, so this one is surprisingly not my number one uh that's the best reference to film fan because film fan bet me not really about me but was gonna be shocked if this was my number one but it's not my number one uh i am a massive night Shyamalan fan uh, he's made some of my favorite films of all time uh and this one looks fantastic it looks fantastic in my opinion i think i i think this one Sims in the trailer has some of his most like eerie and like ominous uh, atmosphere so far in his films, uh, and looks like that it's really, really like focused like on like the tone of it and just like the, like the like that eeriness, like the, like the atmosphere. Like I said, the acting from the trailers looks fantastic. Uh, I love like the setting of it. I love the look of it already, uh, and I'm really, really excited. Uh, and uh, I hope that it's great. And like uh, Brian mentioned, like the way that the movie was shot with the lenses and just like. Going for that, like that, like sort of like vintagey kind of feeling. I think I think it just looks fantastic. Uh, so I'm really really excited. It's very close to number one, but there was one more movie that I am more excited for. Uh, so we'll get to that soon. So yeah, my number two is Evil Dead Rise. Evil Dead is a bit of a big deal for me because my first Evil Dead movie was Army of Darkness, which I saw 15 years ago this year. So groovy. Um, man, that trailer was just. Insanity. I think it looks crazier than the 2013 one. Like the way they're setting it up in this building, it kind of reminds me of Die Hard for some reason. Mixed with Evil Dead, I don't know, but uh it, it looks it looks terrifying. And the practical effects, chefs, because it has that San Raimi look to it, and looks like Bruce Campbell approved. So yeah. 
My number two is Scream 6. Oh, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was great. That was great. <laughs> you think he was choking his chicken? Huh? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> all right. So I finally got around to watching all the first five Scream movies last year, and I didn't like the fourth one that much, but I liked the rest of them a lot. And I think the new one is probably my favorite. I think that Melissa Barrera and Jenna Ortega were great additions to the franchise, and I'm excited to see them return. And I think this one has an interesting idea to leave Woodsboro and go to New York. And obviously it's a shame that Nev Campbell isn't coming back, but... Hopefully this one's still good without her, and I know there were, like, rumors that it was possible, but I'm not sure about that, but at least we got Courtney Cox coming back, and I just heard she's an executive producer on this one, so that's exciting, and Aiden Panettiere's coming back as well, which is going to be interesting, so yeah. Well, my number two is also Scream 6, which is the amount of times girls have screamed every time I whip out this candy cane in front of them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, uh, I've been hooked on the Scream franchise as of late. Uh, years ago, I remember watching the, the TV show on MTV, uh, Remember NTV made a TV show, and all yeah. of a sudden the third season was made by, um, I forgot her name, but still, I binged watched the first four movies last year, and I was hooked on those, and then I watched the fifth movie with my good buddy Brian, and uh, I've been hooked on it, I've been hyped, I'm hyped for you know the New York setting, the Halloween setting, yes, Nev Campbell's not coming back, but uh, I fell in love with the new cast from <clears> the fifth movie. And I'm looking forward to uh, Ghostface taking over Manhattan. All right, everyone. We are now at that point where we talk about our number one most anticipated for winter spring of 2023. Wahoo! Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> cheese. Jeez. So my number one most anticipated movie for winter spring is Teen Wolf the movie. Yes, yeah. yes, Teen Wolf the movie. Let's go. Oh, yeah, that's we, have, we, we have the entire cast just coming back. Let's ride. I've been a diehard fan of the show, even though I haven't even seen the show at all. <laughs> uh, I... So that means I will not be watching the movie, but my real number one is John Wick Chapter 4. Yeah, John Wick Chapter 4, I'm extremely excited for it. Have been for a long time. I know it was supposed to originally come out like in 2021, but then we know the pandemic hit, so delays on this has happened since then. But and the Matrix. Uh, and then that too. So, uh, yeah, it's finally here. It's finally coming this spring. And I honestly am so ready. I've been a fan of a majority of the franchise. I'm not as big on the second one, but the first one and the third one, I, I am a fan of, definitely. And this one definitely looks like it's going to continue the high stakes with really exhilarating action sequences. Keanu Reeves doing what he does best, which is just giving you all these crazy stunts and i can't wait to see what stunts are gonna do um especially uh considering how many crazy stunts they did in the third one i'm curious what the fourth one's gonna do to top because i don't know what they could do that could top like the like the pencil 
a trick, um, like from the second one, for example, or like the book stunt in the third one, um, or even that motorcycle um, action set piece in the third one too. But I'm sure they'll figure out something. And I'm just really excited to see Keanu Reeves back as John Wick. Obviously, Lawrence Fishburne is back here too. And then of course you've got Bill Skarsgård and you got the one actually, Mr. Krabs, Clancy Brown as the antagonist in this one. If that's not enough to get you excited for this, then I don't know what else to really add to that. But yeah, it looks exciting. It looks like it's going to be one of the most heart pounding action experiences of 2023. Um, I'm ready to just hopefully have the time of my life watching this movie. And that is why it is my number one most anticipated movie of the spring. Whoa, John Wick coming at you. Hell yeah. Before I say my number one, uh, shout to Re uh, Rina Sawayama making her uh, acting debut in John Wick Chapter 3. Uh, John Wick Chapter 4. That's going to rule. Anyways. <laughs> anyways. My number one, baby. The only number one that matters. And that is the Super Mario Bros. movie. Um, yeah, this is yeah, this is definitely my most anticipated um, for the spring season. Um I think this uh, looks really great, honestly. I have my worries and stuff like that. But I still do have a bit of my worries. Chris Pratt. But, you know, I think everything else looks really great, honestly. I think the animation looks fantastic. Um, Jack Black as Bowser. Perfection. Already perfect. Already perfect. Um, I just think this looks really incredible. I think they've gotten the world down already. I think this has the potential to be something special, and I hope it is something special. I hope this is good. I want this to be good. I love the games. I love these characters, so I hope that this is a good um, adaptation of the series. And like with, with what Tony said, maybe hopefully when this is successful, maybe it could lead into other things like Legend of Zelda, stuff like that. So hopefully, you know, I hope this is good. It looks fantastic. Um, this is uh, far and beyond by uh, most anticipated for the spring, uh, winter, springtime. I think it looks incredible. So, yeah, the Super Mario Brothers movie, man. Woohoo! Yahoo! So, Violet, is your number one Teen Wolf the movie? It actually is, Tony. Thank you for segueing perfectly into that. Oh! oh. Wow, you called it. Dang. Yeah. All righty, everyone. So, my number one is the only not horror movie <laughs> in my entire top five. That's why I said it's a music top five. Uh, but my number one, as of now, might be my most anticipated movie of the whole year. It might be. I'm not sure about that. Uh, and that is Creed Free. Uh, yes, this, this is my most anticipated movie of the whole year. Uh, this movie, I think, looks absolutely amazing. I, I admittedly will say, I have not seen Creed 2 yet, which I know is kind of funny. That makes us number one. That movie came out at a really bad time in my life, and because I just haven't got around to seeing it yet, uh, but I'll be watching the movie very, very soon. Uh, but I've seen every other one of the Rocky movies, and I've seen I saw the first Creed in theaters, um, and I love most of them. Um, I think it's, in my opinion, like the best like sports films besides like Hoop Dreams that have like ever been made. Um, I think that they really capture like the human aspect of like uh, of people like athletes, um, and just like the like the brutal and stuff like training. Um, and like handling like family like relationships and just like the pressures of like performance and like I, I think they just handle them really really well uh, because like at the end of the day like like Sylvester Stallone says about the first like about the Rocky movies they're not really like sports movies like they're like dramas and like they really are uh, at the end of the day but like what, what mixed in with like the combat and like the boxing it just becomes like this really like grandiose like spectacle of like emotions and stuff uh, this one I think looks fantastic like i mentioned um i absolutely love like the concept of the film is about and like the cast obviously michael jordan's fantastic but obviously there's stuff that's talks also but jonathan majors like is you know becoming like a major star and i think he's like an amazing actor a super cool guy too and like just just seeing him so far in this trailer like i think he just looks fantastic uh and another reason why this is a movie that i'm really, really excited for is it is the first sports movie to be shot with imax cameras all the boxing scenes in this movie were shot in IMAX, and I got to see the IMAX featurette for this movie. 
uh, in IMAX, and it looks like stunning. And the thing that's too so impressive too is that this is Michael B. Jordan's directorial debut, and just the scope of it all looks like it, look, it looks crazy for a debut. Like obviously, this you know this man has had much experience already in the industry. So, but just like just the scope of it, and just like like and just like the grandioseness of it, just looks awesome to me. Um, and also another thing too, uh, speaking of grandiose, that I don't think. It's kind of got under the radar about this movie, but this movie is almost three hours long. It's two hours and 43 minutes. Um, so it's going to be a long one. And, and you know, admittedly, when I see long run times for Hollywood major movies, I get excited just because we don't like, get ones that much nowadays that are like really long, but it's become, it's become a trend uh, recently, like longer movies, which I'm excited that they're back. Um, and this movie, apparently, from like all that I've read, does justify its runtime. time. Uh, so I am very, very excited to see how it all unfolds. Um, so this, like, really might be the most anticipated of the year. And I'm really, really excited to see this movie in IMAX, and that is why it's my number one. Well, it looks like someone hijacked this movie preview. Oh, no! <gasps> oh, shit. oh, shoot! It's too late. Brian's gone. Okay, I'm kidding. Uh, it's pretty obvious what my number one is. Um, Scream 6. Um, I no. am a big fan <sighs> Oh, you got me. Uh-oh. Anyways, um, I'm so excited for this movie. Um, anyone who knows me, I'm a huge fan of the Scream franchise. I really enjoyed the last film. I really like the setting of this movie, and it looks like it's going to stress me out because maybe there's there's an army ghost face. Who knows? And, yeah, I think everyone's in danger in this movie pretty much from that one teaser. Um it's. I really am a, a little let down, uh, sad that Nev's not coming back, but I'm happy our returning heroes from the last movie are coming back. I'm excited to see Gail, and I still have no clue where this movie's going to go. So, yeah, I'm really excited for Scream 6. Hopefully John Wick shows up and saves the day. That's all I want. Take over. Yes. Yeah. And, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Dun. Scream 6. Alrighty. We've made the finale. My number one most anticipated movie for the first four months of 2023 is the most epic movie of the year, of course. 80 for Brady, yo. <laughs> Guy Fieri approves. Yes. Love <laughs> Guy Fieri, but no... In all seriousness, it is Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Like, the Ant-Man movies have been pretty fun. Like, obviously, the first one had, like, Edgar Wright writing it. So, that's cool. But, yeah, this one looks interesting. I'm excited to see what these characters are doing because we haven't really seen them since Endgame. And I don't know, like why they recast Cassie, but I do think Catherine Newton is a great actress, so I'm not too mad at that. And we got Jonathan Majors here as Kang, and as well as that, we've got God damn it, Bill fucking Murray, an actor that I did not expect to see in the MCU, but here we are. And yeah, I'm definitely interested in like, what they're doing with the visuals and stuff in the quantum realm, and hopefully I can see this one in IMAX 3D. Uh, I think it's, it's a me, Mario. Yep. Uh, I think it's Ooh. obvious that my number one is uh, the Super Mario Brothers movie. Now, um, if anyone knows me, if it's not Scooby Doo, I'm obsessed with Spider Man. I'm obsessed with. Mario is another thing I'm obsessed with. You know, like look, I mean, look, look at the, look at my bed, look at my blanket, my blanket, Mario blanket. You know, I got, I got a toad. You can't see him because uh, how fucking exposed it is, but it's there. I got a, I got a toad head. Again, you can't fucking see it because it's exposed. Uh, but you can see, you can see this Italian fat fuck right here, and he's happy. Uh, I've consumed as much Mario as I can. I have like a Nintendo Wii, a Nintendo Wii U, and a Nintendo Switch. I have, a, I have an NES somewhere around here. 
uh, I have a problem, send help. Uh, I've consumed the original 1993 live action Mario Brothers movie. Is the movie good? Fuck no, but I love it. Uh, I've consumed the Mario Brothers anime movie at least a couple of times. The, the very first video game movie that came out in 1986. Not a lot of people don't know it because it's not really Southside Japan. Uh, I've consumed a little bit of the Super Mario Bros. Super Show because that theme song slaps my dick. I've consumed fan films, even the shittiest of fan films. Uh, I've been waiting for a, a full theatrical anime Mario Bros. movie my whole life. But then I heard Illumination was going to be the studio behind it, and it immediately drew my concern because while they're visually pretty and colorful looking movies, story wise, I think they're mostly bland movies, in my opinion. But then that trailer came out, and yes, we had Chris Braz Mario, and it took me a while to get just to his voice. I personally don't mind his voice as Mario. I'm fine him with him doing a Brooklyn accent. You know, it's better than him trying to do uh, Charles Montanay. And but then I saw the second trailer, and it really blew my mind on how faithful they are with the Mario world and how much they care about the property. And it shows that Nintendo wants this to be as the best video game movie possible. And I hope it's really good. You know, everyone else is doing really good. Jack Black, it looks like he's going to steal the movie. You know, Charlie Day, Anya Taylor-Joy, everyone uh, looks good in my opinion. If the movie does well, we could get a Nintendo Cinematic Universe. You know, I'm, I'm hyped for a Legend of Zelda movie or a Metroid movie or, hell, a Super Smash Brothers movie. Can you imagine that? Oh, uh, man. You know, I hope this I hope this list doesn't age like real cheese because I don't want to be another fucking joke like I was last year. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, that's my number one. I I really, really hope I've been waiting for this movie my whole life and I really hope it doesn't suck ass. I really hope that it is it. This could be the spider verse for illumination. You know, you never know. And that's my number one. <laughs> well, everyone, on that uh, note, that was, of course, a lot of fun. Thank you to all of my guests. Uh, Brian, I hope you didn't have a heart attack from that jump scare. No, I did not. Uh, <laughs> and of course before we do officially say goodbye i'm gonna let everyone have their outros if you want to plug in whatever stuff you want go ahead it's your spotlight so starting off with film fan where can the people find you uh you can find me uh youtube channel uh letterbox twitter uh instagram rate your music uh tiktok all that film fan oh five nine nine baby only OnlyFans. Indeed. Hope y'all have a good night. Uh, try to take a couple of beyond to get another video. And uh, yeah, we will see y'all in the next segment. Thank you for having me on, as usual, Mr. Tiger Dude. And thank you, everyone else, for making this a fun, comfortable vibe. Only thing I'm going to plug is my YouTube channel. Um, so, yeah. So, I guess if you would like to check that out, thank you. Uh, besides that, have a safe and happy winter and spring. Yeah! You can find me on YouTube, Letterboxd, TikTok, Twitter. Uh, I think that's pretty much it, really. Uh, thanks again for letting me join this. I had a lot of fun. And thanks for scaring me, Tony. Um, yeah. <laughs> Many times. Anytime. Oh, God. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everyone, for having me on. And thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it. You can find me in the forest at dawn. And by that, I mean letterbox, Twitter, Instagram, etc. You know the drill. You can find me on my socials, Facebook, Twitter. I don't have social for Facebook. What the fuck? No. 
Uh, you can find me on my socials. You can follow me on YouTube. You can check out my uh, latest Christmas, my, my latest movie, uh, Muscle Man's Christmas Drive, uh, wherever Tony puts the fucking poster to feature it. You know, <laughs> I spent three fucking years working on that Christmas movie. And, you know, you might like it. You might hate it. You know, you might uh, judge me in the parking lot and beat the shit out of me yet for not liking the movie. Who knows? But <laughs> be sure to check everything out. Uh, especially check out my letterbox. I've been having a lot of fun. And oh yeah, check out my serialized. I've been having a lot of fun there too. All right. Yeah, if you want to check out all of their channels, I will leave a link in the description down below. Of course, I do have a letterbox. I have serialized. I have all that stuff. I don't use TikTok that often, but if you want to follow me on TikTok too, you know, go crazy. But be sure to comment down below what are your most anticipated movies for winter and the spring. So, everyone, this is 22 Tiger Dude here with Film Fanal 599, Violet, Brian. Jordan and Henzo and don't forget that all six of us on this new year will always have